What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Welcome, everyone. I am so happy and excited that you're here with me today. We have another great episode of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And I love that you join me every week. For those of you who are always here live, thank you. And for those who watch on the replays, a deep thank you to you as well. I love that you are able to go either to Inspired Choices Network and find my shows or on your favorite platform for finding podcasts that you love to listen to. I am all over the place. You can even watch me on TV. How cool is that? So thank you for being here. I'm Karen Leslie, your host for Cultivating Kindness with Karen, and we have a really interesting topic for today, and it definitely, most definitely, will have a lot of conversation about kindness. We're talking about self-talk often tells lies, and it really does, and I'm sure you're very aware of that. But I know that I'm going to bring a few ideas or a few thoughts forward for you during our hour together here that will be new. Because one of the things I like to do is put information forward that helps you to think outside of the box a little bit, to challenge a little bit of how you look at things that happen every day, such as self-talk. So how do you talk to yourself? If you're like most people on this planet, you have an unbalanced way that we of talking to yourself. It'll be probably more on the side of more negative chit chat that's going on inside. And you'll be a little low on that positive and that affirming and kind side. And that's not, not that you're doing anything wrong at all. If you're that way, then you are actually having your mind and your brain and your body function exactly how it should. Now, that may sound like stupid, (laughs) just wrong, right? Like, why in the world would I tell you that if you're thinking more negative thoughts, downer thoughts, thoughts that aren't making you feel as good, that that is the norm? And that that's correct versus having it flipped around saying, no, the right thing to do is to always have these positive thoughts, to always be building yourself up, pat yourself on the back. Like you you need to have your own back and you start with your thoughts. Yes, but that's not how we function on a day to day basis. Yes, many people have fragments of time, moments of time in their day when they can sustain that. But for the vast majority of us, it's not sustainable. We are not able to keep up that way of thinking because it's not normal. It's not our habit. It's not second nature without thinking. Why? (laughs) Even though I don't like why questions, Why may be a question that you're asking right now. And we're going to get into that, unravel that as we go through our show. It is important that you understand what is keeping this other way of talking to you, to yourself, to me, to Karen. And being able to distinguish when it's the truth and when it's not. So. You could probably just stop, start off thinking, okay, all thoughts are not going to be true. All thoughts are going to be lies, and you would not be dreadfully wrong. Majority of our thoughts, and if you've been listening to previous shows, you know majority of our thoughts don't belong to us. They're evolved from teachings and comments and 
our upbringing as children, all of these various areas in our life when we're young, when we enter school, when we enter the workforce, because then again, we're going to be listening, learning, being trained. And we pick up all of these different ways of thinking and belief patterns. We adopt them as being our own. And so we think they're ours, but they actually came from another person. From a book you read, from a podcast you listened to, from all different areas of your life. Hence, they're not your original thought. So all of these negative things we're saying to ourselves and even the positive things we're saying to ourselves can all be lies. And we're going to dig into that a little bit, right? Even that positive thought you may have may not be truth. Not many people will likely have said that to you before. So we're going to get into that. And it's um, maybe a little controversial. I seem to be doing that a little bit lately, and that's okay. But yeah, if the vast majority of all of our thoughts do not belong to us, they're not our truth, then even the positive things we're saying to ourselves falls into that category. Not a truth. Hmm. Ponder on that one for a little bit. See what that brings up for yourself, right? And you can actually come and join us in the chat room. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Yep, there I've got in the chat room, really? With a bunch of or question marks. Yeah, really. So you can come and join on the Inspired Choices Network uh, forward slash chat room and come and be part of the conversation with me. So when I say something like that, you can chime in. You can ask a question. You can, you can share your belief and we can have a conversation. So re please remember this. Any Wednesday at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time and then count it back for wherever you live in the world, you can join us here on the Inspired Choices Network. And I would love to have you here. So when I say something like that, and that question that popped into your head from wherever you are around the world listening, you can join me in real time right now. Get your questions answered. Okay. There's an open invitation to all of you. But yes, everything we think, virtually everything we think comes from somebody else. So it's not yours. So if somebody kept telling you how gorgeous your hair is. And you start thinking, wow, my hair is just awesome. Ah, look how gorgeous my hair is today. <laughs> or whatever it might be. Did you come up with that thought on your own? Or did you have your mind remind you of how many times people have said, wow, I love your hair. Your hair is gorgeous. Something to think about. Chances are. Chances are very high that you look at your hair in an appreciative way or a way of admiring it or whatever the right word may be for you as a result of somebody else's comment. You probably would not have looked at your hair and thought that if no one had ever, ever said anything to you about your hair. Right? Mind blowing is in the, in the chat room. Yeah. It's, I mean, thanks to somebody else or multiple people bringing this to your attention that you knew to look for it. If nobody ever, ever, ever said anything about your hair, you would probably just look, I've got hair. End of story. So all of these different attributes affect the way we think. And interfere with us knowing if it's true for ourselves or not and it truly does interfere imagine if we had a brain that worked or a, i guess the mind might be a better word right now if we had a mind that had a built-in filter and every thought in that nanosecond that that you thought the thought had to pass through that filter and then the filter was going to look at it 
let's take it sort of just more general uh, as is this thought kind? Is this a kind thought? You would be surprised on how many thoughts go through that filter and are being labeled as not being kind. You would even get some thoughts that you think of as being in air quotes positive, for those of you just listening, that will come through that filter and they will be not kind. It is a bit of a mind bend, and I get that. But if we had that filter, just for one day, and every thought went through that filter, and you kept a tally as to how many were on the positive and truth for you, how many were positive that you thought but were not true, and then you do the flip. How many thoughts were negative and were unkind or untrue? Your tally sheet would be so, so out of whack to what you believe it would be. We all know that we have thoughts that aren't kind to ourselves. We all know we think things that aren't true. It's the vast number of times that it's untrue or unkind that I really want to draw your attention to. It would make for a pretty interesting day if we had that filter. There's no question about it. And uh, it might just get in the way of you being able to do what you would normally be doing on that day. So if that ever comes about, take it on a day when you're not at your job. <laughs> I think it would be very confusing. So where do I want to go with this? When your thoughts are coming along and they're on autopilot, which Virtually all of them are to, I would like to say, all are on autopilot. It allows us to be very lazy, to be perfectly honest, just to go along with the day and everything's fine and the thoughts are just doing their things. I'm getting the things done. I need to get done. I remembered to show up here for my show. Uh, I remembered to work with my clients earlier this morning. Like everything just seems fine. But that autopilot of the thoughts actually creates a, like a barrier or a bit of a resistance to newer thoughts coming in. It makes it l uh, less likely or a little more difficult for you to have new and different thoughts when we're on the autopilot track of how we think, even the ones that aren't kind. As a result, then we, hmm, yeah, we get lazy, but there's another word and it's just not quite coming in. Oh, dependent. We become dependent upon those. And that will be a result of the chemical response that our mind, our gut, and our body have at the exact same time every time there's a thought. Those chemical responses our bodies and our mind like them. And so we have multiple reasons why we go on an autopilot way of thinking. Hmm, that wasn't super easy to say. These hormones, they, they dictate so much of our day-to-day our -day living. Our body function, yes, and they're critical for it. But they also dictate the way we think. And so when they get involved, they want to be recognized and be there and be loved by the mind and the body all the time. However, they don't have a point of view as to whether it's something that you're enjoying or not, or a good thought for you, a true thought for you. They just want to be there and like, oh, geez, like some days it's just like, give me a break. Hmm, cancel the word break. Don't like that word. I am not planning on breaking anything around me or within me. But we get to that space where we're like, enough. Enough already. They're just doing their job. Again, you can go back to some other shows and you can listen to more details about that. So we've got all of this put together, allowing us to continue to lie to ourselves. 
And most of the time, we don't even know it. We are coming up to our first break. So we're going to have to carry this conversation um, into our next segment. And one of the things I want to talk about when we come back is this um, the hormones, the chemical response. I want to look at dopamine a little bit and that happy hormone, those that uh, that lift up, that inspiration, that feel good, how that can actually get in our way as well. So not to burst any of your bubbles, but I will probably burst a couple of your bubbles during our show today. So I hope you will come back. Please come back after this uh, commercial break that we're going to have so we can look at dopamine and understand a little bit more about how it can lead us astray as well. So you're here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm Karen Leslie, your host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. We'll be back in just a moment. And again, please feel free to join in the chat room if you would like. And please follow me on all the different social media platforms. I'm very easy to find, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud. I even have all my shows on, but you can also find all the other ones for us to connect and have conversations. So don't go away. We'll be back right after these messages. All right. Thanks, everybody. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're still here with me and I didn't scare anybody off in that first segment. If you just joined us, that may sound like a really strange thing to say, so... Afterwards, I would encourage you to go back to the beginning of the show and listen to the first part. So before we went on break, I said that I wanted to talk a little bit about dopamine. There's a certain kind of person that dopamine chemicals just love. And they cause this person and this type of person difficulties, right? That may sound strange because we are often told right, dopamine is the happy hormone. You want dopamine in your body. And I've told my clients, I've, you know, that dopamine is important. And I've given them little tasks and tools and ways to work to bring dopamine into their body, into their system as a way of helping them with different circumstances that have been a struggle or a real challenge for them. And it works. But remember, there's two sides to every coin. So there's that side that when you set a task and you, you achieve that goal and you acknowledge it and it's like, yes, and you feel really good and you get that dopamine hit. Okay, so what's the dark side? What's the other side of that coin for dopamine? One explanation for it is the person who loves bargains, who loves the deal, who loves a contest, who loves 
anything that's sort of like they could get a gift, they get they get a they they get something. I'm losing some of the words here. That person actually can have dopamine work against them. The mind and the chemical response can actually encourage that person to do something that is not in their highest interest, that is not necessarily going to be good for them or work out the way that they think it will. This is a very common approach um, or technique for uh, people to join different types of businesses. Um, don't get me wrong, I love multi-level businesses. Uh, I love uh, network businesses like that. I belong to a, a few of them. However, if you're someone that has that like, fear of missing out, sort of in air quotes, or you know, like, oh, I could win this. If I just get ABC done, then I could win. And you get excitement and enthusiasm. And as a result, you're going to get the dopamine hits. Now, what's your mind going to be saying to you? The chemical response of being excited is going to bring forward the thought of, yes, let's do this. Yes, we can do this. Yes, I can do this. And then you're in an, in an environment that's supportive of that response from you. Now, as to whether or not you actually can do what you're we're thinking about is a whole other question, and I'm not going to get into it right now. However, what often happens for this individual, this type of person, this way of thinking, is that they keep joining different things, giving it their best shot, and then not having the result they wish. And so they're, they're not achieving what they want. But when they're thinking of maybe giving it up, then there's another contest or there's another program or there's another opportunity to win something or to advance or to do something. And so the same thing happens, that chemical response. Oh, yes. And they keep going or they change the type of business and they go and do something else that has that same thing. Let's join this gym. If I bring five of my friends, then I get my membership for free. I'm joining. Well, what if you don't get five people to join with you? Then you are paying for a membership that you joined hoping to not to pay for. So I hope this is making sense. There's, there's a real trap pattern that happens even with thoughts that are happy, enthusiastic, supportive, go girl, you got this buddy, whatever it might be in your way of thinking. And it's not helpful and it's not kind because then where do you go? You don't get those friends to join the gym with you. Then the thoughts that come through are judgment, shame, embarrassment, financial stress if you can't afford it. But I told everybody, whatever it's going to show up as for you, it is not going to be kind. Did it again. Why do I keep doing this? So those moments of feeling happy and excited frequently end up with people feeling depressed, angry, embarrassed, whatever that emotion is going to be, but it's going to be at the other end of the scale of that happiness hormone. It's tough, but when you see these patterns, please, please allow yourself to see the pattern so then you know that you can make a different choice. Making that different choice, though, that can be a struggle because this is so ingrained in you. You've got the automatic thoughts. You've got the automatic chemical response. You've got the mind and the gut asking for all of this to continue, and it can feel like a real uphill battle. And doing it on your own, yes, it probably will be an uphill battle. And this is where I can help you, as well as many other people. But this is one area that I really do specialize in, is helping you to reprogram your thoughts 
the look at something from a different perspective. And then I help you dig underneath as to why is it that those contests or that winning something or whatever it might be is so important to you? How did that get to be a driving force that then leads you into feeling bad about yourself? There's these lies that are caught into this. This self-talk is not healthy, but it can change. It can totally change. I mean, there's a comment here in our chat room for memories going back to when uh, she was young in school and being teased or picked on. And then that started the whole process that she's realizing of becoming self-conscious of herself and other people around her. And it says, and other people's thoughts about me became mine. And that's a great example. And it happens to, I would say, virtually everybody in school. It's really a difficult time. And the people that often start the picking on or the bullying or whatever are people that also have insecurities and trauma and difficulty in their life. And one of their ways of coping is to deflect and to be unkind to others. But it creates that pattern of self-talk. It creates carrying on those thoughts that were given to you by somebody else and they weren't even true. Sure, we may have failed a math test. I mean, who hasn't failed a math test? Well, I'm sure some haven't. I actually know some people that have never failed a math test. I have failed a math test. Did I feel good about it? No. And depending on response from others, I could feel or could have felt even worse. We are always at the effect of other people's thoughts until we learn that they actually can have no effect on us. But we aren't taught that when we're children. We're not taught that through any part of our schooling. Now, maybe when you're in university, depending on what you're studying or postgraduate work, sure, this may start to come in, but it's not in the other levels of, of our education system. So there's not one of us out there that doesn't have self-talk that is unkind, if not downright harmful. You know, your self-talk can prevent you from trying something new. You could have this idea that you're no good at something, but you are no good at anything. And you may be brilliant at that. But that belief you're carrying based on others will stop you from trying something that could be a wonderful contribution to your life. Then you can flip it. That self-talk could get you to try something that may not work out very well. Being supportive, just like I was saying, right? Yeah, you can do this. May not be helpful. It's important to discern, to be connected to your body, to know when you ask the question, is this a good fit for me? Is this something I should be doing? I know there's the word should there, but that's okay in this moment. Is this something that will contribute to me? To know your yeses and your noes, right? I talk about this a lot. It is imperative for you to be able to discern as to what kind of messages your thoughts are giving you that are going to be helpful or not. Are they true or are they a lie? Only you can do that. People can help you. I can help you figure out your yeses and your noes, but it will be up to you to practice and to figure it out, to work with it, and then learn to trust it. You create a whole new life for yourself when you can do that. And it was one of the key, key, key points in me turning my mental health state around was knowing what was true for me knowing when something was not mine, and then knowing what to do with it, and being in a space where I could make a new choice based on my body's awareness, my intuitive abilities, and I did not have my mind involved. So it's possible. We are at 
another uh, commercial break. This is flying by as it does every week. And you know, one of the reasons, just one of the reasons the time flies by is because I have so much fun while I'm here. Hanging out on the Inspired Choices Network is, is playtime for me. I may talk about subjects that are, are serious and have real implications in your life and in my life, but being here with you is fun. And I've learned that I wish to spend more time doing things that are fun for me, that contribute to others, and contribute to me that make me feel good. When I do that more often, then my whole day, my whole way of being changes in a direction that I wish to go. So thank you for being here with me on the Inspired Choices Network. Knowing you're there and you're listening humbles me, but encourages me to come back every week. So I have no intentions of ending Cultivating Kindness with Karen. So you're stuck with me for quite a while, and I'm thrilled that you join me every week. So don't go away. All right. We have our commercial break and we will be back. And I'm going to give you a couple of tools on how you can work with these thoughts that are not true for you. All right. Don't go away, everyone. We'll be right back. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. And, you know, I would love to hear from you. So please send me emails. As you heard, it's karen at karenlesley.ca. And that's K-A-R-E-N-L-E-S-L-I-E. So please, let's get in touch. Maybe you have ideas of a, a show topic that you would like me to talk about. I'm open to ideas from people. It would be great. I actually have a Facebook group. And in, in my Facebook group, we have what's called the Unspeakable Series. And I talk about whatever it is that the people in the group would like me to talk about usually once a month. There's so many topics that people are uncomfortable sharing on their own, but they're a little more comfortable with giving an idea to someone else and having them talk about it and maybe sharing their concern about it or their, their question that's with it that they would love to have more information on. So depending on your topic, you know, maybe that's something that we would talk about here on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Or you can look for me on Facebook and you can join uh, the Facebook group. And I'm drawing a complete blank as to what it's called right now. I think it's called Creating Beyond Today. But uh, I don't know. I'll have to look and see. <laughs> Anyways, wasn't planning on going into that. So I said that when we came back after our break, that we would talk about some tools and some ways to help you with these thoughts that are getting in your way that aren't being kind, that aren't supportive in the way that you have 
become accustomed to thinking they are supportive. One of the areas that I've talked about a little bit, but not too much, is the area by the brainstem. And it's called the reticulating, uh, reticular activating system. People will go uh, RAS for short form. And this little tiny space at the base of your brain is very, very busy, super active. And it's got a few jobs. And as a result, it dictates a lot of what you think. It's just a bundle of nerves at the brainstem. You wouldn't think that it would be doing too much, but it filters out the information that comes into your, your brain and it decides what's important and what's not, what stuff is going to make it through, just this little bundle of nerves. It programs itself. It seeks to validate your beliefs. Now remember, your beliefs aren't yours. So your reticulating activating system is reinforcing something that's not even originally your belief. It's a brilliant system. Is it brilliant in how it helps us? No, not all the time. It will help you see what you want to see. So if you believe that something is a really good idea, so uh, you think it would be a great idea to get a new car in the color red, then pay attention. Your mind, your brain is going to show you red cars, different colors of red, like which red do you want? And you'll start seeing red cars and you'll start to love the idea of a red car because you had the idea first of getting a red car. It will show you opposites as well. If, if you believe there's something about your body that you don't like, you're not happy with, then whatever that attribute is, you're gonna start seeing it in others for you to look at and go, oh yeah, no, I don't like that. No, that's how I look. No, that's not okay. Again, no point of view. It will match your belief system. So when you have these thoughts and when you start to recognize how, how, uh, how valid what I'm telling you is, then you can make the changes. So one of the um, tools I give to my clients to use and that I personally have found very, very helpful, and I have mentioned it in past episodes, but I want to remind you of it again. There's a phrase you can say when a thought comes in that you want to change. And what we're doing is giving the brain, giving the mind a new job, something different to think about. Right? So what you say is this. I used to, and then you fill in the blank with what that is. Now I, and then you fill in the next blank on that statement. You're acknowledging, which the mind loves, that you used to do this activity. And the one I have given in the past is I used to be terrified of sailing. Now I know that I'm safe and I can enjoy it. Or I used to be terrified of sailing. Now I know I'm safe and I love it. It changes the chemical response in the body. When you end that statement using that tool, because it is a tool, on a positive note like that. So when I said, I now I know I'm safe and I love it. When I said I love it, I felt a whole shift in my body just then. I got a yes. Like, I actually love sailing now. And that's new news to me in this moment. I knew I was liking it. I didn't realize how much my body enjoyed being on a boat till this moment. So when you have that thought that you're not good enough about something or, wow, I am always failing at this task, stop yourself, let yourself know that's not true, and then say, I used to believe I always failed at this task. Now I know that that's no longer true. Or I used to 
always, I used to always believe I failed at this task. Now I know that I can actually change that and do it or be successful at it. I went to a networking event um, Monday evening, two nights ago. Haven't been to an in-person one in years, years. And there was a part of me that always believed that I hated doing these things. I didn't know how to do them. I was uncomfortable talking to people. I didn't know how to talk about what I do. And just it, the list went on and on. I used this statement. I used to hate going to in-person networking events. Now I know I can show up brilliantly and confidently in who Karen is. And I did. I had a really good evening. It was great. I changed how I looked at going to the event. I used this tool and it worked. It worked really well. Did I have moments of being a little uncomfortable or a little unsure? Yeah. And then I just had a quick word with myself and I was okay again. And the whole event, two and a half hours were super. Now, my body isn't quite as happy because I was standing for two and a half hours and I had heels on, which I also have not done for years. So fortunately, I saw my massage therapist yesterday and kind of put me back together again. <laughs> so I may not have been as brilliant in my choice as to what to wear. And when I think about it, I didn't actually ask my body if it wanted to wear those shoes. My mind chose those shoes because they thought it would look good. And they did look great. They may not have been the best choice. My mind led me to wear something that caused me pain. My feet were so sore when I got home. And then it rippled up all the way at my back. So from the top of my butt to the top of my neck, I hurt yesterday, big time. And I'm healing from it today. I didn't ask the questions I could have asked. I believe the thought I had, hey, those shoes would be great to put on. This may sound like a lot of work. And, you know, if you believe it is, then for sure, it's a lot of work. But what if you looked at this whole thing as being a way to create a life that you loved, were comfortable in, felt healthy with, that brought you more? joy or even neutral even just go for neutral if joy is a word you can't relate to then cool ignore it leave that out but what if you could get to a space where you just had less negativity and you started to bring in more kindness to your way the way you think and the way you function on a day-to-day -day basis i used to fill it in now i and then fill it in on a positive aspect. You're going to have that chemical response that your body loves. That's amazing. You're in control of the thought you're thinking. It's not your mind feeding you a thought that's not helpful. Feeding you a thought that's not kind. Feeding you a thought that's just a downright lie. It was a lie that I can't enjoy or go to a networking event without being in fear. Total lie, but one I bought into for years, years and years. And then I chose to change it. So what is one of the dominant thoughts that you are always hearing, thinking, perhaps even speaking, that is either unkind or not true. And how can you use that tool to change it and shift it for you? Don't usually give homework on my show, but I'm giving you homework. Try it. Practice it. See what it does for you. And if you've got questions, then send me an email, right? Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. And let's connect and I can help you. Hmm. Thank you so much. I have in the chat room the name of my Facebook group. All right. It's called, so, Creating Each Day Beyond. And then it's like dot, dot, dot. 
creating each day beyond. Come and join if you would like. We've got a wonderful group going on there and you can come and listen to the unspeakable series if you like. The uh, the next one's Thursday. It's, in, it's tomorrow. Whoa. Okay, the next one's tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am talking about guilt. That's the topic somebody asked as I will be speaking about guilt. Can't give you a heads up on what it will be yet because uh, I haven't figured that out. I'll uh, see what arrives tomorrow because most of what I do is done very intuitively. I will draw cards for information and inspiration. And then I'll read the energy of who shows up, who's in the group, as I do with my clients. I'm very intuitive, very organic and very original, really, in how I work with people. And truly, no two sessions with me will be the same because something else is going to come up. More information will come forward and I can go a little bit deeper in helping you. So we're going to go now to our final break. Thank you once again for being here with me on the Inspired Choices Network. We're having another wonderful conversation in Cultivating Kindness with Karen, with myself, your host, Karen Leslie. So we will be back. We'll wrap all of this up somehow. We'll wait and see how that's going to look. So don't go away. Thank you for being with us. And we will be back in a few minutes. All right, everyone. Thanks. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for staying with me today on our show. It's wonderful to have you here with me. And as I said, it's it's fun. And I truly show up for both you and and for myself. I gain so much from being here every week. And from what I'm hearing from people, you gain a lot by being here as well. So please share the show with people. You know, pass maybe if you have a favorite episode. So pass that along to someone. You can get the links on the Inspired Choices Network. If you come in and you go to uh, podcasts, Click the little arrow for the drop down menu and look for Cultivating Kindness with Karen. And there's all my shows. So you can just click it, open it up, and then you can grab the link and send it to people. I would love it for you to please tell more people about Cultivating Kindness with Karen and have more people join and also have more ideas that come forward and, and more ways that I can be of help to you. And that's really what's important to me. So. Let's wrap this up a little bit here. There is a very famous, and you probably all know it, but there's a very famous story, a fable. Um, I'm not exactly sure the correct word for it. And it has slightly different um, origins and ways of it, that it came about around the world. But the, the short version is you've got two wolves. And I actually drew a card and it was two dragons. And they're both talking to you. You've got the one that's giving you the kindness, the encouragement, the support that you require. And then you've got this other voice that's saying, crap, <laughs> no, you can't do this. No, you shouldn't do that. No, why would you want to do this? No, nope, stop, harmful, danger, whatever it's going to be. But you have these two wolves, whether you've got wolves or dragons or whatever animal you wish from the background of your heritage. They're there. The moral of the fable is the one you feed is the one that always wins. You feed it by giving it attention, 
You feed it by listening to it. You feed it by acting on what those words are saying. So it comes down to you. You always have the choice, right? We look at the network, Inspired Choices Network. Everybody here is about helping you and empowering you to make the choices that work for you. Which wolf, which dragon do you wish to feed? You need to pause and know your thoughts. It's important to take the time to learn to listen to what your thoughts are saying and come off of autopilot. Be intentional with which animal you are choosing to feed. Be intentional with which thought you wish to have to build those neural pathways to create experiences and beliefs for yourself that are kind, that are a contribution to you, that are going to help you to move forward in the direction you wish to go. And maybe that's going to be a brand new direction, a path you've never stepped on before. And that's so exciting. Stop, pause, be aware. Make a choice. When you know what your body is talking to you about, when you know your yes and you know your no, then this becomes so much easier. You know when it's fear that's speaking to you and which wolf or dragon you're feeding. Then stop. Physically turn and look another direction if you wish. Make it very visceral so that you know the action you're taking. And look and talk to the other one, the one that wants to feed you that support, to hold you, guide you, walk beside you as you make these changes. Only you can do it. I can work with you. 100%. I can work with you. However, I cannot make the choice for you, but I can walk with you. So what would you like to change? Which animal do you choose to feed more often until that animal gets the majority of your attention? Will we never be without the other one? Hmm. I personally don't think so. But who knows? So there's your homework. Thank you for being here with me. I really enjoy being here with you every week. And I'm asking you now, please join me next week. We're going to be talking about creating inner peace and kindness. I mean, what a great follow up from what we're talking about today, right? And it was the Oracle cards that chose the sequence. So Inner peace and kindness. You'll, there will be some tools for you and there will be a lot of ways that we will look at where we've been unkind in this and how we can bring kindness into us. As you know, fundamentally being kind to ourselves is extremely important from my perspective. It's why I come here every week. It's why I have the different groups I have and why I work with my clients in the manner I do. Empowering you to bring more kindness into your life will open up more doors for you and create a life that you will thoroughly enjoy. So please be with us next week on Cultivating Kindness with Karen on the Inspired Choices Network. And in the meantime, as always, I'm sending you waves of kindness. May they flow through you and move out all those energies that are no longer a contribution to you. So. Share the show, like the show, and bring some friends along for next week. And Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. 
Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.